All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Data Innovation Summit, and look who are with me. Sean uh, is the Data and AI Officer at uh, Devon. Hi. Welcome to the Robert Show. Thank you. It is such a pleasure to host you today. We're going to talk a lot about, you know, obviously what's happening in the AI space, mm -hmm. data space, and I'm uh, pretty sure you've been moderating back to back. So you have so much to share with our audience today. We are in day two, uh, but would you like to just start with your introduction and what you're working at Devon? Sure. So I'm uh, Sean. I'm the Chief AI and Data Officer at Devon. Uh, we're a software development consultancy based in, uh, headquartered in the Netherlands, but we have developers working in the Netherlands, Poland, India. I'm actually in the UK team. Awesome. So I'm helping to break into the UK market, and it turns yes. out that the thing everyone wants to talk about at the moment is AI. No yeah. matter what we end up selling them, they respond to the AI message up front, which right. is uh, very interesting times. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I, that's what I've been hearing as well. The, the theme, obviously, uh, even if we have a theme of data, mm -hmm. we'll still hear a lot about AI, mm -hmm. and which is good. Uh, people are wanting to learn more, and mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of experimentation as well, which is yeah. going on. Uh, just to start with, obviously, I know a big theme that you've been talking about is uh, how can we reduce unnecessary steps between data and decision making. And uh, I'm interested to learn about your thoughts. What have you been listening from the mm -hmm. leaders to? Yeah, so I'm moderating the M5 stage, which is all about business and data analytics and business right. intelligence. And right. so it's we've had a whole lot of speakers who whose job is to put data and insights and better decision making in the hands of you know customers within their business. So I pose this question to the speakers when I get the chance. Yeah. Um, how are we doing that in a way that meets those customers of those insights where they are? Uh, I've been in this uh, business for a long time. I've built lots of dashboards that people didn't use. I'm happy to confess that. Um, yeah. So we've had, we've had some interesting insights in how people have taken a different approach mm. to bringing that customer of the data and the insight into the process of designing it. It sounds really easy to to do when I say it like that, it's harder in practice, but some progress is being made, which is great to see. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, also that brings me to another question is about uh, how are teams reducing the marginal cost of each additional insight that's bought into the team and obviously mm -hmm. how they're working closely with the team. Yeah, so a year ago I was working for one of the vendors uh, sponsoring DataIQ and I I had to come on the stage and say something about Gen AI and data platforms and everything. Yeah. And what, I, uh, what struck me then is that, yes, there's a lot that AI can do to create value for our businesses from the data that we have. Yep. One of the things I'm really looking forward to, I've seen glimpses of it at this conference, I'm hoping to see a lot more next year, is how AI is going to change the work of data people themselves. True. Data people do a lot of repetitive work, hmm. a lot of work that's based on structured and unstructured data. So I do anticipate in a year we're going to have more and better stories about how data teams are you know, delivering more with less by using AI to ha change how they work. Right. Regardless of what they're delivering, changing how they work with AI. Okay, so that's a pretty interesting point. And do you also see, or you have any thoughts about how AI will change BI? Maybe. So this was sort of the elephant in the room as I posed it. And yeah. uh, I've been listening to it here. We've had a few presentations uh, that have touched on that. Last night I hosted uh, the great debate. So uh, a year ago I told the organizers we need more debate we need yes. more disagreement at these conferences. Yes. There's a lot of people agreeing with each other, <laughs> even though there are some really different views on how you go about this. Exactly. Um, so we had this really spicy topic. Um, you know, AI will be the final chapter of traditional BI. Mm. About 100 people came, which is a fantastic wow. audience. And we had two sides debating it following kind of semi-formal Oxford debating rules. Right. Uh, the, the negative side won. So uh, more people in the audience changed their minds towards the opinion that AI will not be the final chapter of traditional BI, but through that we did discuss lots of ways that AI can and should help BI right. get better. Closing that gap between uh, decision makers and the data that they want, making people more efficient. Uh, but the key thing is, who is making this decision? Where are they and how much do they need to trust another right. human before they trust the data? So yeah. we had a huge amount of fun. I was crying from laughing. But <laughs> the point of the debate was also to learn where are the boundaries of this debate? A lot of people exactly. are saying AI will make software development obsolete. It'll make data analysts obsolete. It's not going to happen anytime soon, but we do need to be the ones adopting it ourselves to take the best advantage of AI. It's also about you know upskilling yourselves in this, in this space and yeah. then obviously see how you can use AI in the best way possible yeah. to make that change. Yeah. Uh, but what is your side? Do you think uh, 
AI will actually... Yeah, well, <laughs> let's go back to me building a lot of dashboards in the past that people yes. didn't use. Yes. Sometimes I think we overestimate how much people want to make decisions from data, whether they uh, compared to how much they just need data to tell someone else. So I do think AI will fundamentally change how BI is developed and delivered. I don't think it will be the end, mm. because I think, and a, and a great team made by the team arguing against, you know, for traditional BI was a lot of the value add of business intelligence practitioners is the human giving the context to some decision maker. Right. And I think a lot of us in data land maybe think that those people want to talk to a chatbot instead. But I think if you're a CEO thinking about a consequential decision, do we open stores here? Do we close, you know, what do we buy and sell? Yeah. You're probably going to want a human to help mm -hmm. you navigate that maze uh, because it's about trade-offs. There's no easy answer. If it was an easy answer, yeah, AI, just, just do it. But the value add of humans in the BI process is the explanation and the context, Very which cool. is great. It's an enduring thing that humans are really good at. Uh, so there will be a role for humans as long as I can That's see. That's awesome to hear. And, uh, you know, thanks for sharing all the great insights. Sean, uh, I'm pretty sure our audience would also love to know where they can reach out to you, learn more about Devon. And uh, obviously, if you guys have any resources that they can yeah. look at, uh, could you share that with our audience? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. I post there regularly. And we have a company blog, devonblog.com. Nice. So I blog there, um, but it's a really open format. Really great thing about the company. Any of our hundreds of software developers who are also adopting AI in their work, they're blogging about their experiences, what they're finding, what they're disappointed about right. with AI and software development, what is surprising them. So yeah, devonblog.com would be the place for practitioners to go and learn how we as a company are adopting AI Fantastic. ourselves. Fantastic. I'll share the link with our audience. Great. Uh, but this was great. Uh, thanks for all the interesting insights and uh, all the best for uh, the upcoming sessions that you have today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.